If you like my videos, please click on the like button and share it with your friends. Also, subscribe for the new videos. Okay, let's talk about the water pollution. The addition of various organic and inorganic substances that change the physical and chemical property of water, thereby leading to determinal effect on living organisms and reducing water usability is termed as the water pollution. So any contamination which is added to water which is changing the property which is not usable now is considered as the water pollution. <laughs> there are many causes for the water pollution and they are divided into two parts. One is natural cause, one is man-made cause. So in case of natural cause, first of all soil erosion due to rain, flood and high speed wind may cause the pollution in water. Deposition of dead and decaying remains of plants and animal will also decrease the property or degrade the property of the water and that is also one of the major pollutant. In case of man-made causes, sewage and other waste, so including human excreta, paper, clothes, soap, detergent etc. which we are throwing everything in the water bodies so that can be considered as the sewage and other waste industrial waste effluents such as oil grease plastic metal acids and other toxic chemicals coming from the industries are considered as the industrial waste then it comes to the agricultural waste fertilizers pesticides etc which we are adding to our agriculture plants then it goes into the water bodies and that can be considered as the agricultural waste Next is human activities like bathing, clothing and washing will also contaminate the water bodies. Customs and traditions, disposal of dead bodies, immersion of idols of gods and goddess, goddesses into the water may also pollute the water. And lastly, radioactive discharges, nuclear waste dumped by the nuclear test, nuclear reactors and nuclear accidents etc. can be considered as a radioactive discharge to the water bodies. Now let's talk about the sources again. There are two types of sources. One is point source and one is non-point source. So what is point source? Pollutants and at the point source, pollutants enter the water at a single point. Sewage, for example, sewage treatment plant and factories. These can be considered as the point source. They can be regulated easily through the law. Non-point sources, pollutants enter the water bodies over large area surfaces run off mining large area surfaces surfaces run water off run off mining waste municipal waste acid rain and soil erosion are the example of non point source you can see in the in the image that there are there is a river flowing in between this and there are some villages there are some villages also there there are some villages and some factories available on this land so wherever this factory is contaminating the river that can be considered as the point source because they are contaminating this river only at one single point while the people from the villages they are not contaminating this they are contaminating this river on not at a single point so that can be considered as the non-point source so let's talk about the pollutants what are the different pollutants in case of water pollution first is sediments so excessive amount of the soil particles carried by the flowing of the water or by the soil erosion that will accumulate at the end of the river and that is considered as the sediments sediments generally reduces the quality of the water it decreases the photosynthesis also it destroys the feeding ground for the fishes clogs the reservoirs as well as the channels so they are not good for the water bodies second is oxygen demanding waste some of the organic waste such as the animal manure and plant derbies that are decomposed by bacteria and for this decomposition the bacteria they need extra oxygen and they take this oxygen from the dissolved oxygen of the water thus decreasing the oxygen contained in the water so these bacteria they deplete the oxygen and cause death to the fish so they can be considered as the oxygen demanding waste 
infectious microorganisms parasitic worms viruses and bacteria form from infection infected organisms as well as the human and animal waste they are responsible for the waterborne diseases so these type of bacteria viruses and parasitic worms they decrease the quality of the water and water becomes undrinkable and that's why they are considered as a pollutant organic compounds nowadays for our daily uses we are dependent on so many organic compounds like like for cleaning agents like surface run off like industrial effluents and so many things and at the end all these chemicals goes to the water bodies and they pollute the things in organic nutrients substances like nitrogen and phosphorus from animal waste plant residue and fertilizers run off into the nearby water bodies and they are they are the main causes of the eutrophication inorganic chemicals like acids salts and heavy metals like lead and mercury from the industrial effluents surface runoff and household cleaning agents they can are run going to the water bodies and then they make it unfit for the aquatic system as well as for the drinking purposes radioactive substances waste from the nuclear plant nuclear power plants nuclear weapons and mining and ref refining uranium and other ores such as substances causes cancer and birth defects and when they are liberated into the water we can say that they are also polluting the water bodies thermal pollution when hot water from the industrial surface process is liberated into the nearby lake or river the temperature of the lake or river increases which generally which is not suitable for the uh, aquatic life like fishes like plants and other things and in that case all these fishes dies because of the high temperature so this type of pollution is considered as the thermal pollution where we are liberating only water but the temperature of the water is different than the normal temperature okay now let's talk about the effect of water pollution first of all if we are drinking bad water or not a uh, good quality water then we can suffer from a, from many diseases such as various diseases of central nervous system it can damage to the liver it can also damage to the brain and kidney and there are many many contagious contaminated many diseases which are caused by the drinking of the contaminated water which leads to the various water borne diseases such as diarrhea typhoid cholera infectious hepatitis jaundice etc are the very common diseases and these are mostly seen in the rainy season when the quality of water is really bad and what are the effects on plants nitrates and phosphate fertilizers used to increase the nitrogen used to increase the nitrogen content of the soil and it goes into the water nearby and it may cause to the it may increase the growth of certain plants on the surface of the water bodies that is the eutrophication of the water bodies polluted water contains high concentration of heavy metals become it becomes toxic for plants high turbidity also causes decline rate of the photosynthesis the large amount of known and unknown aquatic plants have become extinct so these are some of the effect of plants effect on plants from water pollution uh, what is eutrophication eutrophication is the nutrient enrichment of the lake ponds when we are using too much of fertilizers and pesticides all this goes into the nearby lake and if there is more fertilizers in the lake there will be growth of algae too much of growth of the algae and the lake becomes greenish in color and in that case the other plants they will not get enough nutrients and they will die also the greenish surface of the water does not allow the allows the, the radiation to pass into the water and thus reducing the photosynthesis of inside the inside plants of the inside lake so it will make them die effects on animals 
All these uh, pollution of the water also affects the animals. First of all, harmful chemicals and pollutants in water affects survival of aquatic organism. We are also losing a large number of aquatic biodiversity. Also, toxins present in water causes poisoning of the aquatic plants and animals, which leads to the serious health problem to human beings also. Some of the animals, like this tortoise, and they stuck into the plastic caps, plastic rings and other things and they suffer for their lifetime of this, of this type of suffering. Similarly, some of the birds believe, thinks that these are some fishes, these pink balls are some fishes, but actually they are plastics and finally they eat it and they die also. There are many images or uh, many possible cases where you can see these animals are suffering from the plastic from the pollution of the water bodies and pollution of groundwater so even on the surface water is polluted but then also even we are having the groundwater which is also polluted you can see in this image that it says that 33 percent of the groundwater in india is undrinkable so excessive extraction of groundwater leads to the natural pollution of groundwater Examples are fluoride and arsenic contaminated. So if you are taking too much of the groundwater, it will get contaminated with the fluoride and arsenic contamination. Groundwater receives pollutants from the septic tank, landfills, hazardous waste dump and underground tanks containing petrol, oil, chemicals etc. So all these things which are over the ground can leach to the underground water and make it unusable. Biomagnification. Biomagnification is the increase in the concentration of a substance such as the pesticide that occurs in the food chain. The pollutants enter the first organism in a food chain. When the second organism is in the chain, consumes the first one, the pollutant to moves into the second organism. And as we move towards the higher level in the tropical chain, <coughs> In the tropical food chain, the concentration of this pollutant goes on increasing and it goes on accumulating and that's why it is called as bioaccumulation. As we go up in the level of the ecological pyramid, there is energy loss. Hence, at each succeeding level, the predator consumes more of the prey. As a result, the organism at higher level have greater concentration of the pollutant. And this magnification is called as biomagnification. So, how can we control this? Or how can we control what are the control measures for the water pollution? First of all, stop dumping of non-biodegradable waste. Try to go for the recycling of this. Then go for the bioremediation. Bioremediation means use of biological methods for cleaning the water bodies like use of bacteria and some viruses which can eat the dirt from the water so that can be considered as bioremediation minimize the use of fertilizers and pesticides always reduce the use of fertilizers and pesticides control on human activities like like some of the customs and traditions we much we must control then there are sewage and industrial waste treatment plant reduction at source and finally neutralization of the waste material some other things are like oil spillage. Oil spillage can be treated or can be removed by using the oleic or steric acid. Specific bacteria like Pseudonymus putridia can also be used to eliminate the oil spills. Ships can be painted by anti falling paints. And also we can avoid the disposal of hot water in the water bodies. Just cool it down to the room temperature and then we can dispose the water. Reduce the discharging of solid waste such as plastic bags, glass, paper and other suspended matters. Sewage and industrial water should be treated before discarding into the sea. Enforce the strict laws for disposal of poisonous and hazardous substances or chemicals. So that was all about the water pollution. Thank you. For more study materials like learning materials, like MCQs, like other question answers and problems related to your coursework, please visit admirals.tk.